Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to the session of domain. So today we'll be seeing about decision tree. Okay, so today we'll be seeing uh, decision tree in automotive analytics. So we'll be seeing what is meant by decision tree and what all agendas we have to see to complete a decision tree and how we are gonna implement this code. Okay, so starting, we're gonna see how this decision tree will be useful for us in automotive analytics. So let us go to agenda. So in the before going to agenda, in previous sessions, we have seen what is CRISP ML cube. So the day one, day two, the EDA process, pre-processing process. And day four, we have seen the K-means clustering and KNN, right? So we have seen how we are going to implement KNN. So what is clustering, classification, and we have seen the difference of classification and regressions. We have seen difference of KNN and K-means. So these things we have seen. Okay, so and we have seen practically how it was how K means was important as to implement on this automated analytics, how KNN was the important. Okay, so these things we have covered in the last two sessions. So, in case if you have missed any classes, you can always attend the sessions. Okay, the recorded sessions will be there. You can attend and get some ideas of about K means and K. Okay, agenda. So, what is our agenda is our meta. So agenda guys, for today, agenda for decision tree, we'll be seeing the introduction of decision tree. So what is decision tree? What is the purpose of decision tree? What is the goal of decision tree? Okay. So we'll be seeing uh, how we are going to implement this decision tree um, with the automotive analytics and decision tree in machine learning algorithm. Okay. So how this decision tree will be useful in machine learning and how we are going to implement. So what is the purpose of that? And we'll be seeing what is the perfect definition of decision tree in machine learning algorithm and what are the libraries we have to input. Okay. So, and what is the importance in automotive analytics? So we have seen, so when we are when we are going to apply this decision tree, we have to always see the what is importance in automotive analytics. So we'll be seeing what are the important things that are related to automotive analytics. And after uh, giving all the things like introduction, decision tree in machine learning algorithm and understanding the concept of this importance in automotive analytics, we'll be jumping into the conclusion, Chris. Okay. We'll be jumping into conclusion. We'll be seeing what type of uh, things will be useful for us. So what is our conclusion in decision tree? Okay. So introduction. So guys, decision tree is a supervised learning technique. Okay. It's nothing but a supervised learning technique that can be used for both classification and regression problems. Okay. So in the last session, when we did KN and K-means, guys, we have seen two types of machine learning. One is supervised learning method, and another is unsupervised learning method. Right. I have given some examples too for that. So supervised learning means a teacher is teaching. Okay. A teacher is teaching the student. Okay. That is supervised learning. So unsupervised learning means the person who studies himself. Okay, that is an example of supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So decision tree is a supervised learning technique. Okay, which means it's gonna uh, like a teacher is teaching and the student is learning. Okay, and this decision tree can be used for both classification and regression problems. Okay, but most probably it is uh, basically most preferred used to solve classification problem okay so main thing we'll be seeing classification problems only guys when we are going to do this uh, decision tree and how we are going to implement this machine learning and all okay and this decision tree okay this decision tree will be seeing what is the importance of it. okay so decision tree guys is nothing but a supervised learning we have seen this okay so decision tree after decision tree we'll be seeing the what is the uh, useful of this decision tree. So decision tree is the most powerful and popular tool for classification. Okay. It's used for both classification and regression, but it is the most powerful tool for classification. And uh, we can solve for prediction also. It is one of the best powerful tool for both classification and prediction. Okay. And a decision tree is nothing but guys, it's like a flow chart like structure. Okay. It's nothing but a flow chart tree like structures. Okay, so uh, like flow chart we know right for where each terminal will be having node denotes a test attribute, each branch represents an outcome, 
Okay, so each leaf no terminal loads will be having these type of things. So I'm going to explain it in examples. So before going to example decision tree, I want to explain decision tree is the most powerful and popular tool. Okay, it's a popular tool for both classification and prediction. Okay, a decision tree is a flowchart like tree structure. Okay, where each internal node denotes a test on an attribute, and each branch represents an outcome, and each leaf node holds a class name. Okay, a decision tree for the concept of like I can say the construction of decision tree. How the construction of decision tree is going to take place? A tree can be learned by splitting the source set into subsets. Okay, so we are splitting the subsets. Okay, for a tennis thing. So, what does this mean by decision tree? So, guys, as I said, decision tree is supervised learning. It's a non-parametric supervised learning method, which is utilized for both classification and regression. Okay, so moving on, we see it is called a decision tree because it is similar to a tree. Okay, it starts with a root node, which expands on further branches and constructs a tree-like structure. Okay, it is a decision tree because it is similar to tree. It starts with the root node, which expands on further branches and constructs a tree-like structure. Okay, a decision tree simply asks a question, and based on the answer, yes or no. It further splits the tree into subsets. Okay, guys. So what the decision tree is going to do? Okay, when we ask a question, so let me take an example. Is the person going to have a heart attack or not? Okay. So what all the uh, reasons we have, like smoking and everything? Okay, if uh, he is getting heart attack by smoking, if it is as, we'll be having so many subtrees. In this, we'll be having subtrees. Which is gonna calculate for, and if we go give no also, it will be having some subtrees. Okay, where we'll be having different type of uh, classifications. Okay, and we'll be moving on with the roots and nodes. Okay, so this was all about the introduction of decision. Okay? Decision tree is a supervised learning method. It's nothing but use it for both classification and regression problems, but most probably it is used for solving classification problems. Okay, and it is called a decision tree because it is similar to a tree. With uh, like, uh, let me say it will be starting with in a tree we know right how it will start. It will start with the root node. After root, it will be extends to further branches. It will uh, grow to a plant like that, right? So that process is also developed here in decision tree. Okay, and a decision tree is simply ask say questions. Okay, so after that we'll be seeing. Uh, what type of uh, things we can get in decision tree? As I said, we'll be getting yes or no in the further split of the trees. Okay, so the introduction of decision trees. So if you ask me, what this decision tree is? I said, guys, decision tree or a non-parametric supervised learning method. It is for classification and regression. Okay, so the goal of this decision tree. Okay, the goal. Goal of this decision tree. Is to create a model that predicts a value, a model that predicts the value of a target variable by learning simple decision tools inferred from the data features. Okay, so basically, guys, the goal of this decision tree is to create a model that predicts the value of a target variable by learning simple decision tools. Okay, simple decision rules and info from the data features. Okay, what is decision tree and its steps? So, guys. As I said, the decision tree is a flowchart type. Okay, that starts with one main idea and then branches out based on the consequences of your decisions. Okay, so decision tree is a flowchart that starts with one main idea and then branches out based on the consequence of your decisions. It is called decision tree because the model typically looks like a tree with branches. Okay, it is called a decision tree because the model typically looks like Tree with branches. Okay, guys. So that was the goal and what is the use of decision tree. And if you ask me what is the uh, algorithm we have used in decision tree, the basic algorithm used in decision tree is also known as the ID3 algorithm. Okay, by Quinalan. Okay. So it is a ID3 algorithm. Okay. The basic uses ID3 algorithm. Uh, it builds decision tree using a top down greedy approach. Okay, this is for greedy approach. Okay, so what are the decision tree and steps we have seen? 
so why it is called decision tree also we have seen okay so why it is called decision tree because in decision analysis a decision tree can be used typically uh, based on what all the concepts we have okay and a decision tree is used for decision making as the name goes it is uh, uses a tree like model of decisions okay so that is the use of decision tree or the okay so guys we have seen what is the use of decision tree and we have seen uh, what is the use of decision tree algorithm okay so if you ask me before going to the uh, decision tree in machine learning let me explain you about what type of decision trees we have types of decision tree okay. types of decision trees we have four popular types of decision tree algorithms okay id3 card it's nothing but classification and regression tools g square and reduction in the variance so we have these types of decision trees okay so these type of decision trees we have in decision tree and we have some classification problems okay so after that we will be seeing what are the two types of decision tree okay so we have seen this and we will be implementing what are the uh, reasons we need okay so what are the seven stages of decision making in decision tree okay the first thing guys how to recognize this identify the decision you realize that you need to make a decision okay gather the relevant information the second step okay so when we are doing a decision tree guys we'll be having some seven steps right we'll be having steps for all the things where we are going to building something okay so these are the so let me say these seven steps are very effective in decision making okay so when we are building some supervised learning and unsupervised learning also we have seen right train and test split uh, train and test split data why validation is going to come so if we get the underfitting or overfitting how we are going to overcome that so what type of techniques we are going to use are we are going to use regularization technique or hyperparameter tuning transforming the data so we have some steps so after train any can train a test we are going to split our data why validation is going to come so we have seen this so that are the steps which are involved to solve any particular things okay so we have seen how we are going to train our model so we have different types right so when i ask you about uh, crisp mlq we have six stages right uh, data understanding and data cleaning okay so whenever i said so you can always go to a data science mind map which is developed by 360 digit mg and you can get a information there so we'll be having the first step is data understanding data preparation model evaluation model deployment monitoring and maintenance right so why do we have that steps because that steps are involved to create a building of model the deployment thing you can say how to we are going to build a model how we are going to utilize it right so that are the six six steps we have so same thing here guys for seven ways let me say that we have some seven steps which is uh, effective in decision making okay so decision making is nothing but a guys it is a process of making choices by identifying a decision okay gathering information alternative resolutions okay we use step by step decision okay we use step by step decision making process and we are going to help to more deliberate a decision by organizing relevant information this approach is okay the most satisfying the alternative possible i can say okay so if you ask me the first step okay so first step is nothing but guys identifying the decision okay as i said there are seven effective steps right of decision making so the first thing is nothing but identifying the decision so what decision you are going to say the so guys identify the decision basically identify the decision decision means so basically we are going to build any model okay so what type of model we are going to build so what is our decision is okay so what will be our decision so we are going to identify the decision what we have and the second thing will be saying what type of data we are
so the first step is identifying the condition okay Okay. So we have the first step is identifying the decision. And the second one we have is gathering the information. Okay. So the second step will be about. Okay. Gathering the information. So as we know, we have some steps in decision making. We have identifying the decision and we have gathering the information. We'll be having identifying alternatives. Okay. And we'll be having weigh with the evidence. Okay. And the fifth one will be having choose among alternatives. Okay. Okay, we have uh, the seven steps, as I said. And the fifth step we have seen is choose answers for alternative. And the sixth step we'll be seeing is taking the actions. Okay. Take action. And the next thing we'll be having is review your decision. Okay. Review your decision. So these are the seven steps of decision making. Okay. So guys, the seven steps which is very effective in decision making is first we have to identify what is the decision we are going to take and the next thing we are going to gather the information and we will be identifying the alternatives, we are going to weigh the evidence what we have and we are going to choose the answers alternative and we are going to take the action and review our decision. Okay. So these are the seven steps yes, which is involved in decision making. So we'll be seeing the next concepts. Okay. So what is the decision tree formula? So decision tree algorithm belongs to the family of supervised learning algorithm. Okay. Unlike other supervised learning algorithms, the decision tree algorithm can be used for solving regression and classification problems too. Okay. So we have seen these types of things. And we have seen what are the limitations of everything. And we will be seeing, is it? Okay. The question will be arising. Is decision tree a model? In computational complexity, the decision tree model is the model of computation in which an algorithm is considered to be basically a decision tree. Okay. Sequence of queries, the test, the outcome of the previous test can be influenced in the perform of the test. Okay. So guys, is decision tree a model? The question I raised, right? The decision tree is a model of computation in which an algorithm is considered to be basically a decision tree. Okay. It's computational thing. Okay. So, what type of data is best for decision tree? Okay. Decision trees are extremely useful for data analytics and machine learning. Okay. So, decision tree are extremely useful for data analytics and machine learning. Okay. So, Okay, so decision tree guys. Okay, data analytics and this machine learning because the breakdown complex data into manageable parts. 
they are often used in this fields the prediction analysis the data classification and regression okay so these are the main things which is important for decision tree algorithm so data analytics and the machine learning okay so this decision tree guys okay so decision okay so they are often used to these fields so decision tree is basically used for classification and regression we know that right so what type of data is for data this decision tree decision trees are extremely used for data analytics and machine learning because they break down complex data into more manageable parts okay so guys what is the type of this classifier and decision tree so as i said introduction of decision trees there are a type of supervised machine learning okay so that is you explain what is the input and what is the corresponding output in the training data where the data is continuously split according to a certain parameters okay so what are the five uh, process of decision making so we have seen define identify access consider implement and evaluate okay so if you ask me what are the five steps the first thing is define identify assess consider implement the last is evaluate so these are the five process of decision make okay the decision uh, it ensures that that is the best solution of the form so the decision making process includes the following steps as we see defining identifying considering implement and evaluate so these are the things which is important for us the introduction of decision tree making so if you ask me what is the disadvantages or limitations of decision tree a small change in data can cause a large change in the structure of decision tree causing instability okay so for a decision tree sometimes the calculation can can go for more complex compared to other algorithms decision tree often involves higher time to train the model okay besides higher time to train the model okay so guys what are the the things we have seen okay the introduction so decision tree in machine learning the next concept we have here is decision tree in machine learning. so in a decision tree for predicting the class of the given data set the algorithm starts from the root node of the tree this algorithm compares the value of the root attribute with the record attribute and based on this comparison we are going to follow the branch and jumps to the next okay decision tree in machine learning so decision tree is a supervised learning we know that right it can be used for both classification and regression but most probably used for classification right so what is decision tree in machine learning a decision tree is a type of supervised learning method used to categorize or make prediction based on how previous set of questions were answered okay so basically the decision tree is nothing but is a type of supervised machine learning used to categorize or make prediction based on how the previous set of questions were answered the model is from supervised learning meaning that the model is trained and tested on a set of data that contains desired categorizations so supervised learning is nothing but which is based on trained and tested okay the contains desired categorization so decision tree is a type of supervised machine learning guys which is used to categorize or make prediction based on how the previous of the questions are answered okay and the model is form of supervised learning so guys supervised learning in the sense which we have a input and the output data okay the model is trained and tested on a set of data that contains desired organization okay so guys is decision tree a machine learning algorithm right 
is decision tree or machine learning algorithm the question arises right so guys decision tree are among the most popular machine learning algorithms okay given the inter eligibility and simplicity in decision analysis a decision tree can be used to visually and explicitly represent decisions and decision make okay so if we say is a decision tree table algorithm guys decision trees are more are among the most popular machine okay this learning algorithms give the more intelligibility and simplicity in decision analysis a decision tree can be used to visually and explicitly represent decision and decision make so how decision trees are used in learning so guys decision tree learning employs a divide and conquer strategy by conducting a greedy search okay we are going to identify the optimal split points with the trees the process of splitting is repeated in top down recursive manner until all the majority of records have been classified under a specific table of labels okay so decision tree guys okay so decision tree guys we have seen the steps okay so we have seen is a decision tree a uh, machine learning so what is decision tree in machine learning also we have seen okay so why decision tree is used in machine learning so the next question is going to arise why this decision tree is used in machine learning so the main benefits of using decision tree in machine learning algorithm is due to its simplicity as the decision making process is easy to visualize and understand okay however decision trees and machine learning can become overly complex okay so pruning tree structure is necessary okay so what if decision tree is gonna not be used in machine learning so this uh, this um, uh, decision tree uh, a supervised or unsupervised guys it's supervised learning we have known it okay so what is the principle of this decision tree a decision tree is a graphical representation of all possible solution okay a decision based on certain condition okay a decision tree is a graphical representation okay a decision tree is a graphical representation of all possible solution of a decision based on certain conditions okay one each step of node represent a decision tree we try to form a condition of the future we are going to separate all the labels okay contained in the data, data set and to the purest form
okay a node which is divided into a sub node is called a parent node whereas sub nodes are the child of parent node okay where's a, a child okay so guys we have seen the seven steps okay the root node root node it represents the entire population or sample okay this root node represents the entire population or sample okay and further gets divided into two or more homogeneous subsets okay so let me explain it once again okay so i think i was in mute guys so let me explain you from the starting so root node guys so root node it represents the entire population or sample and this further gets divided into two or more homogeneous sets okay further get divided into two or more homogeneous sets and the next thing we have is splitting so guys in splitting it is a process of dividing a node into two or more sub it is a process of dividing a node into two or more sub nodes and the next thing we'll be seeing is decision so guys decision node is nothing but when a sub node splits into further sub nodes then it is called a decision node so basically when a sub node splits into further sub nodes then it is called as a decision node okay next thing we'll be seeing is leaf or terminal node guys okay leaf or terminal node nodes do not split is called as a leaf or terminal node guys the nodes which do not split is called as leaf or terminal node and the next thing we have is pruning so guys pruning when we remove sub nodes of a decision node this is called pruning okay you can say the opposite process of splitting it is a opposite process of splitting guys it is called as split okay branch or sub tree so a subsection of the entire tree is called branch or sub a subsection of the entire tree is called branch or sub and the next thing we'll be seeing is parent and child nodes a node which is divided into sub node is called as a parent node okay a node which is divided into sub node is called a parent node of sub nodes whereas sub nodes are the child of parent okay where sub nodes are the child of the parent so guys decision tree classifies okay by sorting them down to their form okay the root of some leaf terminal node and with the leaf terminal node we are going to provide the classification with the exam okay assumption while creating decision so what are the assumption that we create make the decision tree? so below are the sum of the assumption we make while using a decision tree so in the beginning the whole training set is considered as the root so guys what are the assumption where we can create a decision tree? in the beginning the whole training set is considered as the root features values are referred to the categorical okay if the values are continuous then they are discretized okay the prior to the building of the model. and the records are distributed recursively on the basis of attribute values okay these records are distributed recursively on the basis of attribute values and after placing the attributes as root or internal node of the tree it is done by using some statistical approach this decision tree follows some of product guys so okay this decision tree follows okay this decision tree follows sum of product is nothing but sop okay sum of product okay so the sum of product is also known as disjunctive normal form that is not that it is also known as okay this disjunctive normal form okay guys so these are uh, sop okay which follows by decision tree Okay, so guys, SOP, sum of product x. Okay, so decision tree follows the SOP 
this thing and it is done by it is also the sop is also called as <coughs> disjunctive normal function okay the normal form <laughs> For a class in every branch, okay, the, for the class in every branch, the root, the tree of a node, uh, this leaf node having the same class is conjunction to the product which we are going to use, right? <coughs> the different weightings, the primary challenges in the decision tree method, okay? So what are the attributes? Okay, we have different attributes in selection. Okay, so this was about the decision tree, guys. How this decision tree is going to work? So the decision of making strategic splits having effects or trees accuracy. Okay. The decision criteria are different of classification or regression trees. Okay. Decision of mating is strategic, strategic views, right? So it is very useful in this decision tree. Okay. So how we are gonna use that? Okay. So what is the purpose of that? Okay. The decision of making. So the first uh, thing what I was explaining is how decision tree works. How do decision trees works? So how does it work? The decision of making strategic splits heavily affects a tree cycle. The decision tree criteria are different for classification and regression trees. Okay. So normally we have seen what is decision tree, what is the purpose of decision tree, what is the goal of decision tree, and so on, right? And next thing we have seen is this. Okay, guys. So the decision tree always work with strategic splits heavily. It's going to affect the accuracy. The decision tree criteria are different for classification and regression trees. Okay. Decision tree uses multiple algorithms. It's going to decide to split a node into two or more sub -nodes. Okay. The creation of sub increases the homogeneity of this, uh, what we call the homogeneity of uh, the things which is important. Okay. So guys, so the homogeneity of the resultants of nodes, the decision tree splits the nodes on all available variables and then selects the split which results in most homogeneous subnodes. Okay. So the algorithm selection is also based on the type of target variables. Let us look at some algorithms, guys, which is usually in decision tree. Okay. So we have seen how decision tree works. Let us look onto some algorithms used in decision tree. ID3. It is nothing but extension of D3. Extension of D3. And we have is C4.5. So these are the uh, algorithms which is in decision tree. Okay. So successor of D3. You know, right? The successor and predecessor. Okay. And we have card guys. Classification and regression. Classification and Regression and we have is chain. Okay, so it is nothing but G square automatic interaction detection performs until. Okay, performs until multi level splits while computing classification trees. Okay, so G square automatic interaction, it's going to detect the, it's going to detect, it's going to detect performance, the multiplication level splits until the computing classification trees. Okay, and we have Mars. Okay, the one more method is Mars. It's nothing but multivariate, multivariate adaptive regression splines. Okay, so these things we have. Okay, so if you ask me, what are the steps involved? So what is attribute attribution selection measure? So guys, we have so many things in decision tree. 
okay we have like entropy information gain gini index gain ratio okay this chi square what we have okay so let me explain you about what is entropy is. so entropy is a measure of randomness of the information being proceeded the higher the entropy the harder it is to draw the conclusions okay so that was all about entropy guys so we have seen so let me explain you about that this is like a important thing okay so and this attribution selection measures right guys so what is attribute selection measures if the data sets consists of n attributes the data set consists of n attributes then deciding which attribute to place at the root or different levels of the tree as internal node is complicated step. okay for solving this attribute selection right the for solving the attribute selection problem researchers work and they develop some solutions they suggest using some of the criteria like entropy information gain we have gini index we have gain ratio we have reduction in variance and we have chi score okay so these are the uh, suggestions which is given by some of the researchers to solve the criteria so guys if you ask me what is entropy okay so i will be knowing we will be having some us to learn what is the types of things which is done by researchers so entropy guys entropy is a measure of randomness uh, is in the information being proceeded the higher the entropy the harder it is to draw any conclusion of the information okay flipping a coin is, uh, if you ask me an example flipping a coin is an example okay of an action that provides information or that is a random Maybe head or tail, right? There's or no thing, right? Decision. Okay. From the uh, things, you can consider what is meant by entropy. Okay. The next thing we'll be see is IG, guys. Information gain. Information gain or IG is a statistical property. In statistical property that measures how well a given attribute separates the training examples according to their target classification the constructing a decision tree is all about finding an attribute okay, that returns the highest information gain at the smallest end okay so information gain or ig statistical property that measures how we all how we, how well uh, given attribute separates the training examples okay according to the data target classification will be seeing constructing a decision tree is all about finding an attribute okay. information gain okay. this information gain is a decrease in entropy it computes the difference between entropy and it's gonna before splitting an average entropy and after splitting the data set is based on the values of id figures okay so if you ask me the what is the formula of information gain information gain is equal to entropy before and is equal to minus summation k of j is equal to 1 of entropy j after before and after the entropy is the formula of this information so where k is the number of subsets so k is equal to 1 i have it right k is nothing but number of subsets And J is nothing but subset of this. Okay. Subset J after this. And if you ask me what is about Gini index? Gini index. So you can understand the Gini index as a cost function. Which is used to evaluate splits in the data set. Okay, it is calculated by subtracting the sum of squared probabilities. Okay, we're going to implement whereas the information gives smaller partition with distinct ones. Okay, 
gain is equal to 1 minus summation of ci is equal to 1 of pi gain index works with the categorical target variable okay it may be success or failure it performs only binary split splits higher the value of gain index implies higher inequality higher heterogeneity okay so what are the steps to calculate this gain index so the first thing is calculate gini for sub nodes calculate gini for sub nodes using the above formula okay like this okay success is p guys okay calculate the gini for sub index sub nodes using the above formula for success calculate the gini index for split using the weighted gini score of each node of the split okay so card guys the classification and regression trees uses the gini index method to create split points so this card also uses this classification and regression okay this card uses this card classification regression trees also uses the gini method okay to create split points so this was about gini index guys and next we are going to see is gain ratio So gain ratio, information gain is biased towards choosing the attribute with the large number of values as well. Information gain is biased towards choosing attribute with the large number of values of values. It means it prefers the attribute with a large number of distinctness. Okay, it means it prefers the attribute with a large number of distinctness. So guys, this C4.5. An improvement of ID3 uses a gain ratio, which is modification of information gain that reduces its bias, and it is usually the best option. This uh, gain ratio overcomes the problem of information gain by taking into account the number of branches that would result before making this. It corrects information gain by taking the intercynic information of split of a. Okay. So this was all about this ratio, guys. Okay. Next we'll be seeing is how this um, reduction in variance, reduction in variance is gonna work. Okay. So guys, reduction in variance. Algorithm used for continuous target variables. Algorithm used for continuous target variables. Okay. This algorithm uses the standard formula time. Okay. It means the standard formula of variance. It's going to choose the best split. The split with lower variance is selected as the criteria to split the population. Okay, guys. So it is very important. The split with lower variance selected as the criteria is to split the population. So if you ask me, what are the steps used to calculate the variance? Okay. We're going to calculate the variance for each node. We're going to calculate variance for each split. So how we're going to use this gain ratio, this uh, reduction in variance is guys. It is very important. It is one of the method which is important decision tree algorithm. We know that okay, we have some like Gini ratio and everything. So why why it is important? So these steps are very important, guys. In which you can say the important of this Gini ratio. Okay. So next thing we have is chi squared. The acronym chi stands for chi squared automatic interaction. Take it. It is one of the oldest tree classification methods. Okay. One of the oldest decision tree is the classification methods. Okay. So how to avoid this counter overfitting and decision tree? So when we are gonna do this decision tree, how to implement this decision? Okay. So how to avoid counterfeit overfitting and decision tree? The common problem with decision tree, especially having a table full of columns, because they fit a lot. Okay. Sometimes it looks like the tree memorized the training data set. 
okay if there is no limit set on decision tree it will give you 100% on training data because the worst case it will end up making one leaf for each observation because of this it's going to affect the accuracy when predicting samples they are not in the part of training so guys how to avoid this so let me write it so how to how to avoid counter overfitting in decision so how to avoid this counter overfitting in decision the common problem in decision to be especially having a table full of columns okay because the fitter law sometimes it looks like the tree has memorized the training data if there is no limit set on decision tree guys it will give you the 100% accuracy okay the worst case is it's going to work with each node okay only for each observation it's going to give thus this affects the accuracy when predicting samples when they are not part of the training data okay here are this okay so i have said how this decision tree is going to work so if you ask me uh, what are the ways can you let us know sir? so here are two ways how to remove overfitting one is pruning decision trees the second one we is random forest very important okay to solve this question so pruning in decision trees okay the splitting process results in full fully grown trees until the stopping criteria reached but the fully grown trees is likely to overfit the data guys okay then this one is the disadvantage okay um leading the poor accuracy on unseeded in the pruning you trim the branches of the tree remove the decision nodes starting from the leaf nodes such as it's going to go for overlap so decision tree the segregated decision trimming data set is a according to to optimize the accuracy of approach okay that was all about uh, this thing guys okay that was all about the fruit random forest so two key concepts that give the name random is guys the name itself is random forest a random sampling of a training data set when building this okay it's nothing but a random sampling of train So data set which is built in on data trees. Random subsets of features consider when splitting nodes. A technique, okay, basically a technique is also known as bagging, which is used to create an ensemble of trees where multiple training sets are generated with replacement. Okay, so which is better, linear or uh, free of base models? So guys, well, it depends on of what kind of problem you are solving if the relationship between dependent and independent variables is well approximated by linear model linear regression will outperform the tree based on that. okay so guys how this decision tree is going to work for circuit learn okay so data we have is supermarket data which one downloaded from free Load the so using this basic libraries, we'll be seeing how this decision, how this decision tree is gonna work. Okay, so guys, we have seen the decision tree thing. Okay, so in the session of tomorrow, we'll be seeing decision tree algorithm, the classification of algorithm. Why do we need decision tree? We'll be seeing decision tree in automotive analytics. and we'll be seeing the code guys okay so you can see the code which i have used in decision tree how it is going to okay the code guys how this decision tree will be useful in this automotive analytics okay so guys so this was all about for today's session we have seen what is the agenda of our automotive analytics we have seen introduction decision tree okay the importance of that and we have seen the introduction of decision tree we have seen decision tree in machine learning algorithm 
Okay, so we have seen decision tree classification algorithm. So the next thing tomorrow session will be see decision tree algorithm. Why do we need decision tree? Okay, so guys, in case if you have missed any session, I recommend you to go to the 360 digit MG YouTube and get all the recorded videos. So we have tons of domain which we have done this. So you can always go to that videos and search. Okay, if you want uh, regarding a force, regarding a one. Okay. So we have a lot of domain analytics, guys. So if you are interested in reading the blog, also you can get it. Okay. So the blog this will be published the data set. And always remember, try to read the data side more times. Okay. So you can have how to go 360 digit MG data science. Okay. We'll be getting different type of data science main members, guys, not only this thing. Okay. So this was all about the decision tree, what we have seen. Okay. So thank you for attending the decision tree algorithm. We are seeing different type of decision tree, guys. Okay. So we'll be continuing the practical things.